Hi everyone, Anthony Morganti here. Last week I did an introductory video on On1 Resize AI 2026. In that video, I mentioned that in a future video, I would compare On1 Resize AI 2026 to other applications that do the same thing. That's what we're going to be doing today. In this video, I'm going to compare On1 Resize AI 2026 to Topaz Labs Gigapixel AI. We're going to be working on this image of the woodpecker, and this is relatively low resolution. It is 832 pixels by 1,247 pixels. With it, I'd be hard-pressed getting a decent 5x7 print. If I want a larger print, I need to upscale it, and that's where applications such as Resize AI and Gigapixel AI come in. Now, I'm going to do my best to give you an apples to apples, oranges to oranges comparison, but it's going to be difficult because although both applications ultimately do the same thing, they upscale images, they have different features. So if I'm in one application and I move a slider and adjustment one way, and I'm in another application and I move a slider and adjustment a different way, I'll get very different results. So it really comes down to who's doing it. Both applications have fully working free trials. I have links to them in the description below this video. If you are interested in getting an upscaler, I do recommend that you get one of these two. And I do recommend that you download both of them. They have fully working free trials. Try them out and see which one works best for you. All right, let's get started. Let's take this woodpecker photo and open it up into On One Resize AI 2026. Now, I think if I upscale this four times, I'll have a very large high-resolution image, and I'll be able to get a very uh, large high-quality print. So to do that, go over here to this right-hand side where it says Resize 2. This is in the Photo Size section. And go to this drop-down and go to Percentage. If you go to Percentage, you'll have 2x, 4x, and 8x. I mentioned, let's make it 4x. So I'll go to 4x. And now it will be upscaled four times. And we're going to do something similar in Gigapixel when we get there. Now, we'll go to Settings. Now, with Settings, we choose the model we want to use. They have two main models, Standard and High Quality. I always use High Quality because why not? I want the highest quality image when I upscale it. It does take longer to render compared to standard. So if I was doing some bulk work or something and it wasn't that important, I probably would use standard. But really, use high quality if you can. Now, there are some older models you could choose from. Go to here where it says models, and you could click this drop down, and you could see there's bicubic and genuine fractals. Um, I doubt you'll ever need to use those. So I recommend use high quality. It just takes longer to render. Now, I definitely want to sharpen this image. So I'll open up sharpening. I'll click on the little radio button. Now, when I did that video last week and I introduced um, Resize AI, I mentioned that if you choose like a preset here, like print, it won't give you like a rendition or what it looks like here. And after working with the application a little more, I noticed that very briefly at the bottom, it flashed, and you might not even seen it flash earlier, that it doesn't, or it's unable to give a preview if you have the image fit to screen. You need to zoom in to get the preview. So to do that, go over here on the left-hand side, and there's this little slider. So we'll zoom in, and then maybe we'll zoom it down a little bit. So we're looking at the woodpecker's head. And then once you do that, you'll notice over on the right-hand side, there's a progress bar. So it's going to give us um, a preview of what this specific print um, preset looks like. And you can see that blue kind of bar is still moving to the right. So you have to wait for it. And it takes a second or three to render. Now you'll notice in Gigapixel 2, it does take time to render. So in that aspect, they're pretty similar. Now you can see that uh, it's pretty sharp. If you want to see a before after, you could go over here and click this little eyeball and hold it in with the left mouse button. There's before, there's after. Um, I like split screen view. You get a split screen view. There's a before and there's an after. Now that looks maybe over sharp. Um, I did mention that I do have a way I sharpen um, images of animals that like feathers and fur, I call it. So I'll go to progressive and I put amount at 30 and then I'll put detail all the way down to start with. Now it 
one thing I noticed, it doesn't always re-render. Like it should re-render right now, you would think, right? And sometimes you got to tease it a little bit or you need to zoom in and out a little more and then give it a second and then it will re-render and you can see it's re-rendering now. Now, I don't know. It is a new app. It's brand new. It was just released, you know, a week ago. So I don't know if that's a bug or that's just the way it works. But either way, I hope it's something that they uh, take care of one way or another down the line. Now, you can see that this looks pretty similar. Um, pretty sharp. Maybe we'll try to tease more sharpening out of it by moving a uh, detail to the right. Let's make it relatively equal to the amount. Now, again, it's not rendering. Uh, so we'll zoom in out a little bit and see if that does it. No, it's still not rendering. And zoom out. There, now it's re-rendering. Sometimes you just need to zoom out a little bit and let it do its thing. And it's taking a little time. Sorry, I apologize for the dead airspace. And uh, that looks pretty good to me. Now you could zoom around, you can move it around, you know, and look at different areas of the image. It has to re-render though. You'll notice it's not rendered down here, but it's rendered up here. But I'm not going to worry about that right now for this video, but you can do that. You can see it's re-rendering now because I moved it. So I think this is good. I'm going to save this. So we'll click the little blue check mark. And I'm going to save it to the desktop. It's going to be a JPEG and it's going to have the resize added to it at the end here. So we know that I did this in on one resize AI 2026 and we'll click save. Now it is an AI app. All right. Well, first I should mention it's going to ask JPEG quality. We'll keep it at 100 and click OK. Now it is an AI app. So it's going to use AI to render this image. So all that feather detail is going to be, you know, an AI rendering and Gigapixel does the same exact thing. So it does take some time to do this. While it's doing this, I will mention that on my website, I have a free print resolution guide. It's a PDF that you can download for free, print at home, that shows the minimum resolution requirements for various print sizes to get a good quality and or an excellent quality print. I'll have a link to that in the description below this video. I have a lot of free stuff on my website, by the way. I have uh, keyboard shortcut PDFs for 10 different applications. I have a few different mini courses that are free. Again, all of that will be linked in the description below this video. And also, if you haven't already, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. And remember to click that little bell so that you get notifications of when I post new videos. Okay, as you can see, it was done and I finished my soliloquy. So we'll get rid of this. Now I'm going to take our original woodpecker image and I'm going to open it up into Topaz Labs Gigapixel AI. Now I want 4X here as well. So up here on upscale, we're at 4X already, so I'm good. I want to see the woodpecker's head. So I'm going to take the navigation window and just put it over the woodpecker's head. Now, it's recommending with autopilot, you can tell autopilot is on because the little lightning bolt is active, that it's recommending that we use the standard model. Like uh, Resize AI, there are different models here, but the models are different. We have a standard model, a high fidelity model, a low resolution model. Then we have two more that we probably wouldn't use on a regular photograph, text and shapes and art and CG. So you'd probably use one of the top three. And since autopilot is recommended standard, let's see what that looks like. So click on this to open it up. And then you'll notice that there's three sliders here, but they're not auto settings. Even though autopilot recommended this, it's just set at whatever it was when I last used it. If you want to see auto settings, click this little like lightning bolt and it gives you auto settings. And you have to let this render and there's a rendering thing over here on the left. That actually looks pretty sharp. Uh, let's see if we can make it a little sharper. So I'm going to take the sharpen slider and it goes from zero or it goes from one technically to 100. And it was at like 44, I believe. So let's just like kind of split the difference and put it somewhere towards the middle and let it re-render. And that looks maybe over sharp. So let's then split the difference again between 44 and whatever I was at, like 77 or something like that, right? And that still maybe is over sharp. Maybe bring it down just a little. That looks pretty good. There's a lot of nice fine feather detail in there. 
So overall, that looks pretty good. Now, obviously, there's no people in the shot, so we don't have to worry about face recovery. You could click on and off gamma correction and see if that changes it. I've rarely seen a difference with the gamma correction on or off. So I think that's good. We're uh, going to scale it up four times, just like we did previously. And I used the autopilot recommendation of the standard model, but I didn't use the preset or the auto settings. I just kind of tweaked it myself. So with that said, let's export this image. Like I did before, I want to make sure that I'm uh, exporting it with the highest JPEG quality. So I'm going to make sure that's at 100. And we'll export this or we'll save it to the desktop. And then you can see this saves a lot quicker. So we're going to close this window down. As a matter of fact, we're going to close Gigapixel all the way down. So we have the original photo right here. And then we have the two upscaled images. I'm going to take both of these upscale images and I'm going to open them up in Photoshop because it's easier for me to AB them in Photoshop. And the way I'm going to do that, they're currently open in individual tabs. This is the image that was the gigapixel image. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to unlock the background layer and then I'll be able to rename this layer and I'm going to rename it gigapixel. And then we're going to go over to the tab that has the uh, on one resize AI 2026 image, and we're going to unlock that. And then we're going to rename this resize and click enter. And we have the move tool keyboard shortcut for the move tool is the V key. And again, on my website, I have full list of keyboard shortcuts for a lot of different apps, including Photoshop. We'll take this and move it up to this image, or this tab, hold the shift key on. So it goes directly on top. So it's directly on top. So we have resize on top of gigapixel. If you know anything about Photoshop, you know that we, we're not seeing the reset or the gigapixel image at all. Because resize is on top, that's what we're seeing. I'll zoom in by hitting command plus on my keyboard a few times. If you have a PC, it's control plus. We'll just bring it down here so we see the, the head of the woodpecker. So this is resize. This is gigapixel. This is resize. This is gigapixel. They're very, very close. And again, if I just tweak things a little differently in one or the other, I could have made one look better than the other very easily. So then, again, there's resize. And there's gigapixel. Now, you may be wondering, well, how does this compare to the original image? Well, let's see. Let's uh, fit this to screen by hitting Command-0 on my Mac, Control-0 on a PC. And let's just minimize this for a minute. And then we'll take the original image, and we'll open that up into Photoshop. Now, again, that's going to open on its own tab right here. So I'm going to have the move tool. I'm going to take it. I'm going to move it up to the other images, the other two layers, right? I'm going to hold the shift key on so it goes right in the middle. And you can see it's a lot smaller, obviously, because we resize this. But first, let's go over here and rename this and call this original. All right, now we're going to make it so we can really compare it. So you need to transform this by hitting Command-T on my Mac, Control-T on a PC. And then we'll make this just fit so it's the same size as the other two renderings. All right. Click little check mark. Okay. And we'll zoom in again by hitting command plus a couple times. Scroll down here to the head of the woodpecker. Okay. We're currently looking at the original image. I'll turn this layer off and we'll see the resize image. There's the resize image. I'll turn the resize layer off and we'll see the gigapixel image. There's gigapixel. So there's gigapixel. There's resize. There's the original. All right, there's resize, there's gigapixel. Well, my dad always said six of one, half a dozen the other. Other. That's one of, one of his sayings he often said. And really, in my opinion, if you're comparing resize and gigapixel, the way I used it today, it's six of one, half a dozen the other. They're very comparable. So it really comes down to maybe price, which one's on sale, which one isn't on sale. Um, the way you use it, which one you think works better in your workflow. Uh, maybe one doesn't run on your computer and another one does. So you're kind of forced to use one over the other. But again, they both have fully working free trials. Download them both and see which one works best for you. So again, this is Gigapixel. That's Resize AI 2026. And here is the original image. Again, in the description of this video, I'll have a link to everything. I do have a discount code 
for on one resize AI 2026, but it doesn't work if the application is on sale. I think as of the making of this video, it is currently on sale. So my discount code probably won't work, but you can give it a try. I don't, unfortunately, unfortunately, I do not have a discount code for uh, Gigapixel AI. So I'll also have links to my website. You can check out all that free stuff I have in that print resolution guide. Remember to check out that. And that's it. Thank you, everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon.